Mr. Proctor, and I also I have a question. Yes, ma'am. It wasn't brought up before. Delivery. When will that take place? Um, typically, the deliveries are done in the morning. Okay. And will that be coming in through the 135th um, as well? Place. Uh -huh. uh, place. Yes, yes, it will. And these will be large trucks that are coming in? It's a, yes. it's a variety of different vehicles. Okay. Th okay. These are all things, if I may, Madam Chair, these are all things that are permitted by the code. The, it's really inappropriate for the board. A and I apologize for, for perhaps being a little uh, excited here. It's really inappropriate for the board to imagine a trash problem, to imagine a noise problem. You have noise ordinances, and we have drive-throughs, and we put on the record how far those drive-throughs are from the residential single-family area. And we've put on the record the hundreds of feet between the street and the drive-through coming off of 135th, coming across the property in an east-west mm -hmm. direction, or west-east direction, coming into the drive-through. You, you don't have factual basis for a lot of your comments. And I, and I say that respectfully, you, you just don't. And, okay. and I'll, I'll say one other thing to address uh, the board member's comment. We will c uh, agree to a condition to close at midnight, this store, notwithstanding the hours of some other store in some other location. Thank okay. you. Thank you. And you've answered the question that I had, whether or not Wendy's would consider doing the restaurant since it's permitted without the drive-through. And I, too, have a concern with the drive-through. And my concern is the senior home that is right across uh, when we talk about, right. you know, quality of life. Uh, I know the area. It's unfortunate. It's been a parcel of land that's been sitting there all this time, and I don't think they do do diligence to try to find the appropriate businesses to come in. Uh, there was a young lady who spoke about we don't need any more unhealthy to tell you the truth, people just don't care about that. And, and, and I understand, family dollars, all they're going to do is sell processed food. And, you know, it's not part of what we need to consider. What we need to consider is the fact it's the drive through. And we, it's whether or not we believe that the drive through should be allowed. And based on concerns that I have and concerns that I think the board members have, uh, we're of a mind that we don't want to approve, and I, I'm, you know, I, I should let it up to you guys to decide because I cannot. With, with that said, Mr. Attorney, um, I would. Just uh, one yes. I just like to state that uh, I think the board is able to uh, comment based upon its experience with other applications and with its observations of how similar facilities have operated both in the city and outside the city. So if you have observed a trash problem, for example, with a drive through at other fast food facilities, I think that's a reasonable comment to make. We, we approve a drive through possibly two years ago when Publix came and they were redoing and they were adding the drugstore. And one of the things that was considered was the proximity with the bank that was there and it was shown that uh, how their trucks were going to come in and how the people were going to be able to, there was ample, you know, sufficient space. I'm concerned of that space because it is still a small space right there. Uh, I live not too far from a family dollar that's on 119th and the fact that the county has put those dividers, that truck when they're making delivery they're mm -hmm. backing they've blocked off the entire street to make to back up into that family dollar in order to make yes. uh the the delivery uh I, I would have liked to see other things but it's not up to me uh restaurant is permitted and i would you know it's great the restaurant but i just don't think that you know we have enough that 
the drive through would fit right there. That's just my concern. Uh, with that said, I would like to propose a motion to deny this application. I second it. Please, please, please. It's been moved for dismissal by Ms. Hill and seconded by Ms. Cohen. Uh, roll call, please. Ms. Philippe. Yes. Ms. Cohen. To deny it? Yes. yes. Oh, okay, then yes. <laughs> Just Mr. McDermid? Yes. Ms. Hill? Yes. Mr. Genty? Yes. Uh, motion passed, 5 0. Oh. Unanimous. Unanimous. Okay. <laughs> moving on, moving on. Thank you. Next case. Oh, this child just blocked. I'm sorry. <laughs> You've got a. Uh, moved by me, uh, seconded by Ms. Cohen. Right. I'm sorry, she's mine. <laughs> 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 Linda, you cannot block the hallway. Move your chair, put it back, thank you. <laughs> okay, well, that was on. the fast one. <laughs> That's Grandchild number four. All right. uh, V6, V-06-18, Copper Bridge Foundation, 12500 Northeast 4th Avenue. Is the applicant here? Please. Please move forward. Okay, Mr. Cook, go ahead. Thank you, Madam Get Chair. Everybody ready. The item before the board is a special exception to allow for an educational facility located at 12500 Northeast 4th Avenue for the Copper Bridge Foundation. I'm supposed to speak? No, no. sir. No. Okay. May I have the PowerPoint, please? Okay. Thank you. Technology doesn't always help. No. <laughs> As you can see, this is um, an area view of the site. As stated, it is 12500 Northeast 4th Avenue. The property is approximately 12,000 square feet. Unlike the existing, I can't see that far, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> the property is for um, Copper Bridge Foundation. The building is approximately 3,000 square feet. The proposed use, as stated, is for classroom, educational, workshop, lectures, cultural-oriented um, activities at the location. There have been no previous zones approvals, uh, zones approvals at the site. As stated earlier, this is a special exception under Article 4, Division 2, Section 4-202, Educational, Special, or Technical Facility within the R6 District, a residential district. The approval is through the special exception by the, you, the Board of Adjustment. This is an area um, view of the transit zones or the zoning districts of the area. As you can see, you have residential all across of it. You have it to the existing site, to the north, to the south, and to the east you have a commercial zone, and to the west you have another residential. Like the other project that was for the um, drive-through, this is a special exception, and we have criteria that we look at to um, review for the viability, vi viability of the use at that location. And the first criteria that we look at is the use as listed special exception in this district where the property is located. Kind of awkwardly stated, but it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> it is a yes. To allow for this use within the R6 district, it requires a special exception. Got it. And this is why it's before the board. Uh -huh. B, is the 
is there appropriate provisions for access facilities adequate for the estimated traffic from the public streets and sidewalks so as to assure the public safety and to avoid traffic congestion? Yes, there is a full frontal access to the existing development along Northeast 125th Street. And additionally, the proposed use will generate a total of 134 trips daily and will result in around 11 additional trips in the a.m. peak hours and 16 p um, trips more in the p.m. peak hours. See, are there adequate parking areas and off-street truck loading spaces, if applicable, for the anticipated number of occupants, employees, patrons, and other layout parking to, to, to conveniently serve the property? Yes with a caveat, okay? This property is a non-conforming property in that it has existing five parking spaces on there. We do have a provision within the code that when you're redeveloping a property and you have, to your most practical extent, fulfilled the criterias of the, um, of the um, code, then what you have is what you have. They have done the best they can based on the circumstances of the site plan and they are providing five par parking spaces. And to all disclosure here, that is not going to be really adequate for the use that they are planning to employ at the, um, at the site. Based on the uses that they have there, such as the proposed educational use and they have an existing residential use at the site, they would need 16 parking spaces. So what do we do in that mindset when you have a deficiency of that capacity? The applicant being progressive and being open-minded about how he wants to serve the public that's going to utilize that has come up with an idea. He has a parcel, let's move to that, that is indicated here that is to the west of it, that is open, that he owns, that he's going to develop into a parking lot. The code provides a provision within the um, um, LDRs to allow for you to have off-site parking that is within 16, which, excuse me, with the, that is within 600 feet of your property that can serve you as your parking area. As you can see, this is less than 600 feet from the um, property that we'll be serving, and it's his, and you're do able to do this through a parking agreement. He's gonna have a parking agreement that's gonna require review by the city that says that he's gonna service his property and provide property so it can help that. And I believe when he, he, he's going to talk about how he's going to utilize that and service it through other me mechanisms so it can help mitigate any kind of conflict with those who are coming to the site at the time. Do you have, uh, is there a suitable landscaping and fencing for the property? As you can see, the property is located within a residential area. The applicant has proposed robust landscaping. And he has done this not because the code requires it, because the quote is an existing site, and what triggers meeting current code requirement is, uh, is are you increasing your site by 50% or more? He's not adding any more square footage to the site, he's just renovating the site. But in that in mind, regardless of that, he's going to bring about substantial um, landscaping to the site. Why? Because he understands that that's gonna serve making the community look better, it's gonna complement his service, that he's providing there have lush um, landscaping so when people come they can see that it is a, a, a beautiful site. E, is, is the proposed special exception reasonable in terms of logical, efficient, and economical extension of public services facilities such as water and sewer, police and fire, and transportation? Yes, all basic public services such as public water, sewer, police, and fire protection are readily available and currently serve the property. So that the proposed use will have no adverse impact on the public accesses or cost. F, will the proposed special exception constitute an inappropriate use in the area and will not substantially injure, distract from the use of the surrounding properties or from the character of the neighborhood? Yes, the educational facility school are in allowable use by the LDRs, which is the land development regulations, and are deemed to be generally suitable for locations in the R6 district.
So in conclusion, we recommend an approval. We recommend an approval of this special exception with a few conditions, and I will read those into the record if I may. One, that the parking lot for the educational facility site shall be striped and proposed as proposed. A parking plan shall be submitted showing both the parking lot improvements and the location of the valet services and how such services will be delivered as part of the development review committee process. Two, a parking agreement shall be submitted, approved by the city and recorded in the rec records of the Miami-Dade prior to final approval by the Development Review Committee, which shall include a student parking plan and note approved, a note approved in Section C and guaranteed regarding its as or a suitable alternative site and approved by the city. Continued availability as parking resource for the educational facility. So what are we saying there? A lot of yada yada there. Forgive me for being, in, being a little informal with that. Um, it is to say that as long as that use is going on there, that the applicant is committing to providing parking. And if he's if plans to develop that site in the future, that he'll still be obligated to providing parking for the use at 12500 Northeast 4th Avenue. That is really, at essence, what we're saying. And in, con in concert with that, that he would provide um, um, information to the people who will be patroning the uh, site on where the parking is so they won't have them parking into the uh, re um, residential areas and in other, other flows, they have nowhere to go. Three, the parking lot shall, re shall receive a certificate of completion prior to the finalization of the building permit for educational facility site. And four, a certificate of use be applied within the community planning and development department for the use that he's proposing. Okay. Thank you. And the applicant. Hello, my name is Gio Darter. I am um, the owner of the property at 12500 Northeast 4th Avenue, also the parking space or the vacant lot uh, near, near the, uh, the 125 property. I am um, a longtime resident of North Miami. I actually grew up in this neighborhood. Um, I left in my 20s and I came back um, about 12 years ago and I opened up a business and then I bought this property that was in very uh, in disrepair. And I am a lover of architecture and history. So it was my purpose to restore the building uh, to its natural use and to present it as a part of history of North Miami. With that said, we also have a foundation that we've a nonprofit that we established 10 years ago, and our mission is to promote cultural and educational exchange through the medium of our artistic expression. So my purpose when I bought the building was A, to fix it and use it as a, a, a rental, and also in the future, this. It's taking us five years to get to this point, um, but again, I'm here now, and so I'm letting you know what it's about. Uh, it's about beautifying this neighborhood. Uh, it's in the entrance of North Miami into the 125 corridor, um, I believe in, uh, I believe in actually the fact that I believe in community. I've been working with this community for the last four years, bringing arts and culture to North Miami. This is why it's important for us to have this center here uh, to bring um, the community to our space. What we did is we first tried to uh, uh, create more space uh, at the center and uh, actually we have not five uh, spaces, we have seven available at this point. Uh, that wasn't enough. So I went and I purchased just recently the lot that was nearby at a great expense due to uh, the fact that we needed to supply more parking. Uh, I am, uh, again, I love architecture, but I also like landscaping. So it's all about beautification. So what we did is we hired um, a company to come in and to create what will be the future of that. And I believe we have that. I'd like to show it to you, if possible. Uh, do we have the, and I Thank also you. brought with me tonight uh, just to know that we really are a foundation and we really are what we mean. I am a, uh, a longtime resident of North Miami and I do believe that community is everything. So um, in this case here, we'll show you that uh, the project is, uh, I just want to show you quickly the USB, if we could just do that quickly, just so they could see the, the proposed site. Again, it's all about beautification and really it's about, about this area and also 
applying what is needed, which is the parking space. And even the parking spot will be used as mm -hmm. an art space. There'll be art uh, throughout the uh, 125 uh, garden. There'll be a garden art center. And the parking lot will also have uh, structures that will have art as well to tie it into the 125 uh, location. As a matter of fact, we already have on our building, we already have the, the welcome to uh, North Miami. The sign is in my property. The city of North Miami put it in there. I have welcome to uh, Sunkets Grove. That's all within my property oh, yeah. at this nice. point. Um, Thank you. Hey, okay. are you referring to, to Sunkets Grove? In, uh, it's are you talki yes, talking it's about Griffin? Griffin Road, right, yes, correct. Yes. It's okay. got the four, the yeah, four directions. And it's all oh, in my property. Okay, okay. 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 the direction right. out. Huh. Sunkist so Road's on the other there? side of the yeah. city. So M my apologies. Could you um, access the um, PowerPoint, please? Thank you. All right. Are you hey, I got it. So I believe most of you know this building. It's on 125th yeah, Street and 4th Avenue. Uh, and I've had it, like I said, for about five years. And we started working on it, at least for the appearance for the, for the entrance. And also, at that point, um, we did so we, we, we restored the, the, the two-story, and it's now um, uh, rental, it rented. And we did the same thing with the major building. But what we want is we want an art space that we could do um, workshops, art workshops, and exhibits with uh, documentary, uh, uh, um, showing uh, docu documentary films, um, and uh, just workshops, simple as that, using that area. As a as a uh, as a center, I brought with me today. We have on our board Mimi Ferre, who's also with us. She's uh, the head of our uh, arts programs. We worked with the MoCA here many times. We worked at Little Haiti Cultural Center many many times over. We've brought international acts to Miami, and we like to bring them to North Miami. And we love the fact that Griffin Park, uh, the amphitheater, is about to start their uh, or that's I believe uh, uh, in there's a new. Um, design that's gone forth about a possible new Griffin Center at Griffin Park. Yes. That would be wonderful. So that would be an area, again, we want to bring artists to that neighborhood. And so, again, that would just be something that we could echo as well. Mm -hmm. So that's the, just uh, just you see, that's the property there. That's the, the future site with the, uh, the landscape. I have actually the landscape designer with us. And the architect didn't show tonight, but, yeah, but we're here. Um, so. Um. What else? Oh, these are our programs that we work with that will be at the center. Uh, we're looking at 24 kids max and about seven staff in the daytime from 8 to 8. And um, pretty much that's it. On occasions, we will have uh, exhibits or evening uh, documentary uh, films uh, uh, screenings. That's why the, the, uh, the property is so important next door for the parking. Again, it's right down the, the street. It's, I mean, just a, a, a few... Uh, uh, steps away, not too, too far. And so again, in the same block. So you don't have to cross street. It's all in the same block, pretty much. That's and all I have, have to say, I think, at this point. Unless uh, maybe Mimi wants to say something or if you have questions for us. Open all right. Public hearing. Uh, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Mr. Darter? Darter, yes. Okay. Uh, we'll open public hearing. For anyone for or against the item, please Come forward and state your case. Name and address. Uh, Carmela Furman, 12530 Northeast 4th Avenue. Uh, so I'm a few building, a couple of homes away from where the location is. I, if it was a different location, I think I would be totally supportive of it. I'm all for what you're doing, you know, the arts, the workshops, like I'm big into that. My fiance is big into that. That's kind of what we want to see in North Miami. My concern is the safety of that area. I mean, I don't make a left. I don't go east when I come out of Fourth Ave. Like I don't come right out of my street and make make a left. Like it is between the people coming from us uh, coming north and then one, you know, people going 125th uh, east to west. It's a dangerous little intersection. Like, I don't cross the street there. I don't even walk up that street. Like, I walk my dog and I walk him around all the way up to the other end where the Griffin Park sign is, which I think is, mm -hmm. uh, is that third? third. Northeast third, third, right? And I'll walk back. So 
So it's that's my only concern is the safety of that location. Otherwise, I love the idea. The parking probably also would be an issue, I would think, if people might miss it. I mean, that means then the signage has to kind of go up. I, I don't know what that's going to look like. And the landscaping part, there's also a lot of trash that piles up there. People just toss things or the garbage trucks, just things fly out. Um, so that upkeep um, would be necessary, I think, for that, especially if we're going to have really nice landscaping. Things are just going to get trapped in there because, again, I've picked up quite a bit of trash out of those bushes in my street. Um, so that's, that's really all I have to say is really my concern is the safety of, of anyone driving in or out or trying to cross into it from the double yellow, uh, which I do see people in the buildings that are on that street kind of cross over out of their parking buildings and make that left or make a right, which is dangerous seeing people come in speeding from uh, Griffin. Uh, so that's really, I don't know how much time I have left, but that's really all I have to add to that is the safety concern. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, good evening. My name's Mimi Ferre. I live at 555 Crandon Boulevard uh, in Key Biscayne. And I have been a part of uh, Copper Bridge Foundation since uh, 2010, but I'm also an educator. I've been with Miami-Dade County Public Schools since 1989. And um, I started as a museum educator and working here on 150, close by 151st, and then went over to Miami Beach North Beach Elementary, and now I am the um, art, um, head of the art program in Key Biscayne. Um, I've done a lot of um, art um, education workshops and classes, and I see that in the future that this location is perfect for doing these types of small uh, workshops and um, focusing on, on art education. I think that um, the building, um, the two, um, spaces that are available are not that huge and the large amount of traffic that you are foreseeing um, is uh, controllable. Especially with the parking lot that is going to be placed close by and the possibility of having a parking ballet system um, um, organization helping out with um, people coming to have their cars parked. So um, I'm in support of this um, variance. Of, the, of this exceptionality. Special Thank you. Exception. All right. There might be one more person. Too much. Hello. Uh, I'm Joelle Orr. I've been with Copper Bridge Foundation since its inception. Um, I would like to thank you for your dedication to the city and the community that we've been getting so involved with since we've been here. And I wanted to point out that every time we talk about doing this, we've been, and you'll see in the picture, that we do talk about putting the uh, a blockade, like a, a pretty one, but some kind of block so that if a car were to be going off the street or something, that there would be something in place. It's something that we've always discussed and it's in the picture. Um, and then as far as the traffic, Safety. I think. Hmm? No, please, yeah. Um, I think, you know, it's not like the Wendy's where people who are just passing through the community are going to be just going in and out but rather the people who are going to be coming to us are people who are specifically coming to do these cultural arts. And uh, I don't think that's gonna be an issue and we are creating parking specifically for that. And I think that's, that's about it. And we're also trying to serve the people who may not even have cars, people who are walking, people who ride their bikes, um, people who are already going to places, we're on the border of the downtown area, so people who are already going to MoCA or people, you know, it, they can walk. We're really, really close. So, thanks. Thank you. Uh, I think we have one. Mr. Antonio, you had something to say? Please. But yeah, we yeah, have one more. When they're done. Yeah. Please. Go ahead. Hi, Melton Goodwin, 310 Northeast 126th Street. So I live. The, on the corner of 126th Street, so the next block over, and Northeast 3rd. Um, I love what you guys have done with the buildings. Um, I didn't like the fact that it went kind of unmanaged, I guess, for a while. Um, and that lot that you now have yeah. um, has been an eyesore. Um, so I'm looking forward to something um, 
you know, you're doing something nifty there. Um, uh, so I'm definitely in support of it. I think this is what North Miami needs to attract people like this. When we get them here, we need to keep them here. And this has been part of the problem with North Miami. And that's why you're having the situation right now with the Wendy's, because if you guys all remember, it was the same thing years ago with the Walmart. Thank you. Thank you. All right. With that said, public hearing is closed. Mr. Attorney. All right. So I just wanted to clarify on two conditions in the conclusion recommendations related to the parking lot. One is that in condition number one, it says the parking lot for the education facility shall be striped as proposed. And I think it should, if it's correct, also say including paving and drainage. Is that correct, Mr. Cook? Yes, sir. Okay. And the second is that uh, in condition number three, it talks about the parking lot shall receive a certificate of completion prior to finalization of building permits. The concern is that there would be a place to park once the building becomes operational. So I was suggesting alternatives of either uh, issuance of building permits or the cer completion of construction or certificate of occupancy. So one of those instead of the word finalization. Um, would I would think a certificate of occupancy would be appropriate in that that indicates that the building is ready to be occupied and then we would need to have the parking available to the service those mm -hmm. who will be utilizing right. it. Okay. okay. Thank you. For and Thank those you. two corrections. Okay. All right. And before I open board discussion, I just have a question uh, just to clarify from Mr. Dorder. Uh, I know you said educational uh, activities and all, and you mentioned 24 kids and then that maximum and that your program or your hours of, of operation would be from 8 to 8. So we're not talking about having classes for children. Workshops, no workshops. So they come in, and we have we have certain people like uh, Mimi Ferre, other artists that come in from around the world, and we open up to do um, exchange programs with them, along with the city of North Miami with the Mocha. We work with the Mocha. We work with the school. So these, we work. I'm sorry, but these children wouldn't be coming on their own. No, local, local kids, and they either come in a bus or they come. They're driven okay. by the parents. Okay. Yeah, they don't. They, they don't. And not they don't necessarily walk. during. No. Uh, school hours. Well, we, we in Some, the summer, no. Okay. Correct. Okay. Correct. Madam Chair? Yes, Mr. McDermott. I'm sorry. Board, oh, board I'm discussion. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, uh, I think this is really wonderful. Um, and I'd like to make a motion to approve it bearing discussion. You know? Anybody else want to make any comments? Um, I any think, comment? Oh. Any other uh, comment? Uh, I would like to make a motion to second it. I believe it's a good idea. Well, I would just want to make one, one request. I, I also think this is fantastic. I think this is exactly what we've been trying to get into North Miami. This is what our downtown redevelopment plan speaks to. The only thing I wanted to ask, though, is on, um, on the on speaker that had some concerns about the direction of traffic. Um, when you're coming out of that parking lot, maybe it would be appropriate to put a, a I think that would be a right, right turn, turn only, only sign so that nobody's crossing traffic onto the other end by <coughs> Publix. Or just, just a suggestion to help alleviate that um, concern. Well, if, if there's should consensus be on it, you can make it a board condition. Yeah. Uh, that would be fine. That's fine. So I'll amend my motion to include that. Okay. I'll second it. Well, you'll second. Well, I'll second. Does, do you accept? Okay. All right. So it's been moved by Mr. McDiarmid with the uh, right turn only. Right Thank turn you. Only. I'm not thinking. Uh, and seconded by Mr. Gentil. And uh, roll call, please. And all of the staff conditions, of course. Of course. Yes. yes. Of course. Mm -hmm. yes. Definitely. Without goes without saying. All right. Roll call. Ms. Philippe. Yes. Ms. Cohen. Yes. Mr. McDermott? Yes. Ms. Hill? Yes. Mr. Genty? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you, you so it. much for bringing this to our community. I'm so thank excited, and I love the progress yes. with these buildings. I've been following it for the last year or two, and I just think you guys are doing a great job. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Appreciate that. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank I, you I, I think it's going to be a real um, 
um, <laughs> a real highlight to the city. Thanks, Gio. Yes. Thank you. Thank you all, too. Glad Thank you kept you. the architecture. All right. Me too. Yeah, me too. Isn't yeah, it beautiful? It's beautiful. Actually, it looks better with it's modernized a little bit. Okay, next case. Yeah. It's running late. Yeah. I've got a grand job. <laughs> Uh, next case, V-09-18, Atelier Kids Learning Center, 12625 West Dixie Highway. Okay. Applicant okay. is there. Okay, Mr. Cook, go ahead. Do your Thank stuff. you, Madam Chair. As you stated, this is Atelier um, Kids Center which will be located at 12625 West Dixie, Dixie Highway. This is a special exception to allow an educational facility within the C3 district. Um, may I have the PowerPoint, please? Ready. Thank you. technically have difficulty now. Okay. All right. So am I missing one? The property is approximately fourteen thousand square feet. Um, is located at the on the east side of West Dixie Highway and south of Northeast one twenty seventh Street. Is it gonna work now? Okay. I think it's ready, ma'am. Thank you. As you can see, it, here you already have the um, property in yellow, and red is the indication of a, a adjacent site that they're going to combine to utilize as parking for the facility. Mm -hmm. um, as is stated here, so you, have, it's, you have a building of approximately 3,500 square feet in structure. You have um, obtained the north portion, as I stated, for, of the vacant property for um, parking and then they will add and close um, playground area to service the children that they will be um, working with. And they are looking to work with an uh, age group from 18 months to five years of age. Stated special exception. The special exception is pursuant to um, Article 4, Division 2, Section 4-202 to allow for educational special um, or technical facility within the C3 district as stated. As you can see, this is the area map demonstrating all of the um, zones in the area. This property is located in the C3. It also has a few overlays over it that would help um, with the development of other use beyond just the educational use that they're saying there. If you can, as you can see on the plan, they have to the site itself is C3, to the north is C3, to the south is C3, to the s another south portion is C3, 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 C3. So as you can see, they are in the C of C3 in this area. Business. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. So as in other situations dealing with the um, special exception, we have the specific criteria that we look at when we're reviewing the project. The first one is dealing with is the listed area that is located requires a special exception for this use. Yes, within the Can't C3 see. district, you require a special exception to you for use of educational facility. Two, is there appropriate provision for access facilities adequate for the estimated traffic from public streets and sidewalks so to assure the public safety and avoid traffic congestion congestion yes the proposed use is an educational facility child learning center the proposed site indicates the preliminary in increase excuse me preliminary ingress and ingress in if, if i can talk just a little bit ingress and egress from the property. They're doing a one way off of West um, Dixie for allow for the staging of drop off and um, dish, um, the, and the exiting of the students into the building and other patrons who will be utilizing the facility. Are there adequate parking area and off street truck loading spaces? 
for the anticipated number of occupants, employees, patrons, and layouts for the parking is convenient and conducive to safe operation. As I alluded before, because of the design of the building and how they're going to orient it, more specifically, yes, pursuant to Article, 4, Article 5, Division 14, um, 5-1402, the educational facility requires a minimum of one parking space for every 200 square feet. You have a 3,500, almost a 3,600 square foot um, building at 200 feet as, um, as parking for every 200 square feet of area. You would need 17 parking spaces. The applicant is providing that on site along with the circulation to help mitigate any kind of conflicts within to the right of way. In uh, addition to that, we have did some caveats to that, if you can see, as in A, that the parking spaces be delineated um, with four inch yellow or white um, stripes, that the um, traffic control signs and pavement markings be used to, as necessary to ensure safe vehicle traffic operation signs and to comply with the manual of uniform traffic control devices for the Federal um, Highway um, Federation um, Administration is be employed at the site and that whichever feasible curb, whenever feasible, curb cuts, wheel stops, um, barriers be installed to protect the landscape, pedestrian areas, and the building from any property damage. Is there a suitable landscaping or fencing along the lot? The applicant is proposing landscaping for the site. Again, just like the other um, um, property that we just um, discussed, the um, Cooper Bridge, they are not increasing the actual um, size of the building, but so they wouldn't be required to come up to um, the LDR's landscape requirement, but they are in doing that anyway. And you know, as we discussed in the other project and just with this project, you know, landscape enhance your building. Doing proper la landscape is gonna make it good and, make, and softens the impact on it and it helps with the communication with the pedestrian realm with good landscaping and they are, playing, they are employing that. Um, and is there a um, proposed special exception reasonable in terms of the logistic, efficient, and economic extension of the public services such as the water and sewer and things to that effect? Yes, all basic public services such as water, sewer, police, and fire protection are readily available and provided to the property and meets applicable service levels standards. Will the proposed special exception constitute an appropriate use in the area? Now this is a little caveat because this is a commercial area. Generally we, we don't look at, um, generally in this, in our, even ironically I would think to some extent, having an educational use within um, a commercial area. But it is permitted by special exception. And in that mindset, the special exception in of itself lends a case-by-case -case, um, study for you, the board, to assess if this is appropriate. And in that mm -hmm. mindset, we believe this use is appropriate based on whatever assessment you find appropriate based on, you know, based on the use. We think what they are employing would be um, adequate for that area and would not be intrusive to what is going on around it right now. You have adequate parking. You have a, uh, have a public parking area which is to the um, northeast of it that people could also utilize um, if they needed additional parking. So in conclusion, We are recommending approval. We have several conditions that we have, um, um, would like to have addressed, and I will read those into the record if I may. That a drop off and pick off, pick up area shall be delineated in the rear of the property for orderly and safe drop off and pick up of the students. That assistance be provided to help the students exit and enter motor vehicles. As described before, above, the traffic control signs and pavement markings used be used to, as necessary to ensure safe vehicle traffic operation and said signs be complied with the manual of uniform traffic control devices, Federal Highway Administration, United States Department of Transportation from 1978 as adopted by the State Department and tr State Department of, excuse me, for the Department of Transportation as revised. That whenever feasible, curbs, wheel stops, pavement markings, and burlots shall be installed to protect preliminarily the pedestrian 
area, landscape areas, building and property lines. That the use comply with all applicable, applicable requirements of the Department of Education, the Miami-Dade Public School, and the Miami Fire Rescue Department and all other county and state agencies. Um, I would strike that a Miami-Dade um, public school. This is a private in entity, so they really wouldn't fall under that um, criteria. Yes, this year. Um, that prior to, develop, prior to the Development Review Committee approval or issuance of any building permit, that the applicant provide a landscape plan that complies with the LDRs, Section 5-1201, prepared by a, a registered landscape architect and registered um, Florida um, architect or a Florida architect that a certificate of use from the community development and planning department be issued upon compliance with all terms and conditions of approval, the same subject to cancellation upon violation of any of the conditions herein. And if I may, uh, Madam Chair, as a caveat, uh, something hadn't been um, discussed in the um, in their proposal is related to the number of students that they will have at the, um, um, at the site. And that is important because question. you have certain criteria you need to meet based on the number of students there, especially dealing with at their school age that they are talking about, which is day nursery, kindergarten, and preschool, uh, after school care. You need a minimum of 45 square feet per child, half that. So let's say you had 50 students, then you need 25, 45 square feet for, park, for, the, play, for the playground area. Right. 35 right. square feet the inside, 45 outside, outside. For and house. they need to um, delineate for the interior, as you are stating, Madam Chair, 35 square feet per child at the site. So they would need to um, um, establish that they are able to meet what their that. capacity. Goal. Yes. Okay. And the condition needs to be met, Madam Chair. Yes. So, uh, um, Mr. Cook, are you adding those to? Yes, sir. Conditions? I'm adding to condition number eight. Eight. Okay. So right. can. Can you state it the way you would want it read? Madam Sir, um, the condition number eight is related to school capacity. The applicant needs to clearly indicate the number of students that they will have at the property, and they need to coincide with the requirements as stated in on record. It's pursuant to playground area, they would need a minimum of 45 square feet for for half of the students to be at any time, and they would need to have 35 square feet for each student interior for use. So you don't want to set a maximum, like the maximum number of students permitted at this facility are X? So, well, we would need a breakdown on it because the, the breakdown is the floor area excluding office, bathrooms, and things that effect. If they had a kitchen uh, area, kitchen, they'll be excluded hallway. also. And um, I'm not sure of that. Right and that's that. DCF. Can you set that at the yeah, time of exactly. DRC? At the time of DRC. We need to know that information, yes. Okay. So, so if I can ask you a question about number six. Sure. So will there definitely be DRC approval or review? As yes, part of it this? is going to DRC. Because you have the landscape plan is prior to DRC approval or issuance of a building permit. It's going to either say whichever comes first or remove issuance of building permit and require it prior to DRC approval. It's sort of like they can come to you if they don't bring it at time of DRC review, they say, oh, we'll do it before building permit because that's what the condition is. It does. I'm thinking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say ideally we would need it at the time of, of, at, of, at DRC. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So you would strike or issuance of any building permit? Oh, yes. Yeah. That's my presentation, Madam Chair. Right. Thank you. Thank you. And I see Mr. Burns is up. Are you representing the applicant? Yes. And the, and the uh, owners are also here. But um, Kevin, for the record, Kevin Burns, 2065 Alamanda Drive, North Miami, Florida, 33181. On behalf of 126 LLC that owns the property and the applicant for this okay. uh, development. Um, there's a bigger picture here, and, and I got to go into exactly what's going on. I, I, I'm, I just want to make sure that does he have I was sitting here thinking the same thing. Power so, to Yes. So I guess the first question is, are you an attorney? No. 
and I in what capacity are, are you representing the applicant? I'm registered as the consultant and agent with the city representing the property owners, one, 126 LLC, and also with the applicants that are, are here to speak on their <coughs> behalf, and I am registered with the city. You, you mean registered as a lobbyist? Yes. Okay. Sure. Okay. okay. Good evening, board members. Uh, welcome, uh, friendly face on the board, <coughs> uh, experienced board member there. Um, the bigger picture is, if you're not familiar where this property is, it's the Miami Way Theater, the vacant lot. There's an old, their building that we're speaking about is the old Watson restaurant and the adjacent parking lot. It's four parcels of land all assembled uh, together. Um, as you all know that have been here for a while, it's been vacant and closed up for nearly 20 years. Um, some local people owned it, never did anything with it. Um, previously this year, um, a local uh, North Miami resident and also a local North Miami business owner purchased the complete property to redevelop it. Uh, instead of tearing down the old Miami Way Theater and tearing down the old restaurant, um, we looked to see what was the best use for it. We've made a commitment to restore the old Miami Way Theater and to restore the, the building that the applicants want to go in. There's a lot of stuff going on with this property because it is such a highly visible property. Everybody wants to know what it's going to be. And there's lots of things that are being said that's, that's happening. One of the things that may happen go in there is that uh, in the theater part uh, was O Cinema may move from Wynwood to this facility. As of today, though, O Cinema has no contract or uh, contracts to lease or purchase the theater or this complete uh, property. Um, there is uh, an item coming before the, the council and the CRA board to turn it into a special events um, uh, facility hosting numerous events um, year round. And that seems to be one of the most popular items out there because we've had calls from all over the country for people wanting to lease a space. Where in North Miami could you hold a function to host 100 people that's affordable? Where could you hold a, a mini concert? Where could you ho hold a, a seminar? So having that facility that's next that's door, what would be compatible in the smaller building next door that wouldn't create a conflict? And we kept debating what would be great for the street but also great and co synergy for the um, primary use of the Miami Way Theater, which will primarily be at nighttime. So we were looking for a low intensity use. We didn't want a restaurant. We didn't want a microbrewery. We didn't want a bar. We didn't want all these other things that are permitted. So we came across the current, the, the leases who operate a, a school for 11, uh, since 2011 at another location and they were looking to relocate here to the North Miami area. And we think it is a perfect fit uh, for the type of learning center that they have and for the quality education that they're going to have. Plus, it fits with the downtown redevelopment. It fits with everything that North Miami is trying to do. We're going to have, there's going to be some life on the street in the daytime. And there's going to be life in that facility at, at nighttime. And so it's a, it's a good synergy there. The CRA has already given money for the restoration of the outside of this building. The CRA has already given money for the outside of the restoration of the Miami Way Theater just for the, the outside. And that addresses the exterior of the buildings, it, ex it addresses the parking lot, and some other things. So the applicants, um, you, I'll jump into the number of students. That is determined correctly by um, DHS. Um, uh, what was it? Yeah. DCF. DCF. They determine the number of students based on the square footage and so forth. It's not within our control. So uh, that will be determined by, by that agency. We have a really great plan for uh, drop off. We m exceed the required parking space on site. Plus, we have additional parking spaces available to us uh, as part of the Miami Way uh, Theater. Plus, there's additional on street and there's a, another city parking lot close by. 
Um, we think this is going to be uh, something that the city wants. There is no neighbors. There is no residential people that there's a conflict with. Um, the perfect timing, just everything about it. It's an experienced operator who brings years of experience to, to this area. And um, I think it's a very uh, 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 compatible for the vision that we're looking for in, in the downtown uh, West Dixie corridor of uh, North Miami. And it's compatible with what is going to happen at the Miami Way uh, Theater in the future. Uh, any questions or concerns that you may have, um, be happy to uh, uh, answer. The uh, owners are going to uh, uh, spend a small fortune on the interior to bring it up to date. Again, the building has been um, closed for nearly 20 years. Um, new roof, plumbing, electrical, and all that. Of course, the staff is going to review, and, and all the, the permits will be uh, uh, addressed and, and, and ascertained. So um, I'll just stop it there. And any questions or any concerns of the public, be uh, happy to Thank answer. You. Thank you, Mr. Burns. Uh, and now I will open public hearing. Uh, uh, anyone for or against this particular item? Not very. Don't encourage her, Kevin. <laughs> Yes. Okay, with that said, we'll close public hearing, uh, board discussion. I, I, I like the project. I don't see any problem with it. Um, I'm excited to see something happening with that beautiful building. I'm so excited to hear about the Miami Theater. So um, unless anybody had a discussion, uh, I don't yeah, have so you guys open up. I have a couple of questions. Question. Yeah. Um, you talk about events facility. Um, the fact that it's a school, will that uh, forestall the ability to sell alcohol or serve alcohol? First question that know. came up when this, when the, the idea. No, because the uh, Miami Way Theater is, does not serve alcohol. A caterer will have a special event license that goes with each production company that yeah. rents the facility and catering. Yeah. Caters. Um, that was one of the first questions that we asked, and there is no conflict, and uh, the city uh, assured us of that. Plus, we looked at all the ordinances. And the events would be at night when the kids are. Majority home. of events would, would be at, uh, at night if they did it. Mm -hmm. And also, if, uh, if O Cinema should uh, purchase the property and put the, move their cinema from Wynwood there, um, they are very um, glad to have a tenant in the daytime um, uh, contributing to the the, the mortgage payment, uh, you might say, and it's compatible for what they do. So it's going to be a school during the day and an event thing at night? No, a learning center, no, yeah. No, no, it's two separate, two, two, two separate buildings. Two separate buildings. The right. theater is going to be renovated into an event planning or event space, but this will be a full-time day-to-day. One more question. Uh, right. day Monday through Friday from the morning until yes. And afternoon. where's the playground going to be? The playground. Um, Towards the west end that I see. It's, uh, it's yeah. the... As of right now, on the way the plans are submitted now, is uh, parked partly in the rear and also on the north w east corner um, of the of the uh, of the property, adjacent to the building, attached to the building, so that the teachers can see out into the part uh, to the uh, playground, and there's access out to the playground through the through the building. Okay. If one of these events facilities or O Cinema goes in, will they not need that extra space that they're going to put their playground in for parking? It's a it's a separate um, when O well whatever yeah. goes into yeah. the Miami Way Theater. Mm -hmm. The city recently had passed a, a, a an ordinance um, and then it, it got confusing where if there is a public parking lot within a certain number of, of feet mm -hmm of your building, you do not necessarily have to meet the parking requirement. Okay. And that's not just a factor here, it's a factor in all of the downtown and, and a problem with the redevelopment. Well, is we, there one? And so um, <laughs> there's plenty of parking yeah. for yeah. this yeah. entity yeah. Okay. on their property that they control. Mm -hmm. um, what happens with the theater is something that they're going to work with the CRA and the city is addressing the whole downtown area all over yeah. again. Parking. And Mr. Burns, uh, the owners, the proposed or the owners for the atelier is are they here? Oh, absolutely. You guys, okay. I I just have a question, and knowing that you cannot, if you could come to the podium, name and address, and then I have my questions for you. <laughs> name and address for the 
Mariana Gallardo, 465 Northeast 112th Street, Miami. All right. Uh, I know that at this point you cannot know what is, in terms of your capacity, what DCF will, will do. And, and I'm asking that to try to protect you. Uh -huh. And I'm sorry, you represent the owners of the building or the property, but we've had too many uh, applicants come in for this type of, of projects and they cannot move forward because, you know, the number of kids that they are allowed just doesn't make for them to break even in terms of, you know, making a profit or what have you. Uh, at some point, I know the renovations are not you, it's the owners of the property that's gonna make it. But once that is done, and I can't tell you how to do your business, but at some point, if you can get in touch with DCF so they can at least, you know, but I wanted your, to ask, how many kids do you, would you like to have? Because I know if you're opening up a business, you have some idea of, you know, what the capacity should be for you to, to make a profit out of this based on, you know, what you're going to pay for your lease and the expenses for your teachers, yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. So uh, you have an idea of how many kids you would like to have. I think it's going to be around 80. 80. Mm -hmm. And if you can't get 80, would you still move forward with the building? Yes. Okay. Just want you to be aware. Okay. Mm -hmm. Real quick, how, how, what is the duration of the lease? It's 10 years. I'd like to move approval. Second. All right. Moved by Ms. Hill, seconded by Mr. McDiarmid. Uh, any other discussion? Okay. Roll call, please. Ms. Cohen? Oh, out of order today. <laughs> Why <Okay. not>? <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Mr. McDermott? Yes. Ms. Hill? Yes. Ms. Genty? I mean, Mr. Genty. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes. Forgive her. <laughs> uh, Ms. Philippe? Yes. Passed five to zero. Thank you very much, and this is the start to the redevelopment of that whole uh, parcel of land. Thank you. Kevin, Wait. did you guys say 20 years? Ten. Just about. Philip Michael Thomas mm -hmm. had it in oh, 1980. There, yeah. Oh gosh, 1981, and he had it open for two years, and then it was, you know, clo vacated, closed That's down. Great, though, yeah. The previous owners bought it in 19 and 2005, with the dream of redevelopment, redeveloping it through the, the the help of the CRA, but didn't quite happen. And then they recently uh, sold it um, last year, and. Uh, Again, a local person has it, and um, a lot of people looked at that property, wanted to make churches out of it, a lot of, do a lot of other things. We just thought this yeah, was the most you know compatible. What? That garage is a deterrent, so when are we getting up? Oh. up? <laughs> That's another story. But let's move on to the next case. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, which is V-10-18, Fountainhead. Deserland. Deserland. 1890 Northeast 146. Yeah, the car people. And the, uh, I don't know. Right. The ninja. ninja. <laughs> okay. The ninja Cafe. Yeah. I was the Ninja thinking. Cafe. Oh, okay. So thank you, um, Madam Chair. Um, thank you. Ah. Um, so I'm gonna take this very slow. Take I'm it trying very to slow. Rush not, through too other. slow. <laughs> not too slow. <laughs> <laughs> because not this is um, I rushed through a few of them trying to get us to this point. Um, so no, this we have that. Yeah. We have that in the package. Okay. Right. It's a okay, little bit more that they speak there. Oh, okay. a, a little bit more they give. A little bit more. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> so um, what we have before us is a special exception to yeah. allow for a sports field, recreational um, field, multi-purpose field within the M1 district. And that is to do something of that type, of course, is through this special exception. It's not by right, per se, um, if you say. And if, if I may have the PowerPoint, please. Thank you. 
So as you stated, this is, is located at 1890 Northeast 146th Street. Um, as you can see, this is actually at the corner of, that is um, Northeast, whichever you say, 20th Lane or 19th um, um, Avenue. I've seen it both at that local um, given there. Um, and it also is not clearly indicated there. The point of this part of this part parcel is also supposed to be a part of it where they're uh, planning to have parking at that location. So also in that, you're looking at a parcel that is approximately 156,000 square feet, 3.58 acres. Mm -hmm. This is a large lot. The intent of this is to do, um, as I stated, a multi-purpose fill. Um, they talk about in the plan a paintball um, fill. They also have discussed with me having archery, being able to transform it into a soccer field, and there may be other uses they may, what they may desire to um, utilize the um, property as also in the context of recreational amusement um, um, capacity. And you house also had previous zoning there. They did um, um, submit to, um, for a temporary use to have a block party mm -hmm. at the site, which would have been great. But unfortunately, because of circumstances and things like that, we weren't able to proceed forward, so it was denied. Um, hopefully, they will, um, won't be discouraged by that, and we can get it done next time around with um, earlier um, submittal and things that have had. So as stated, this is a special exception per Article 4, Division 2, Section 4-202 to allow for a recreational sports facility in the M1 Industrial District. So what we have here is a conceptual plan, site plan, to what they're talking about doing, and the dots representing barriers that people could hide behind in the context of a, bank, a paintball um, facility going on. If you see other um, items that they have located out there, such as... Um, and I don't have my site plan in front of me, but it's okay. Um, thank you. Such as a seating area, reception area for rental and storage and things to that effect going on at the um, site. Um, so when we looked at this, as we have with other special exceptions, okay, before I get that far, we have a context of the area as a characteristic of the area as a dealing with the zoning. And as you can see, this is essentially all industrial around it. You have it to the um, northwest that's still buffaloed by um, M1. You have a residential um, component, but that's, you know, buffered as, as I stated there. So you have that all around there. So when you're looking at this analysis, as we did with the others, you have certain criteria that you need to address to uh, move this forward for an approval. And when we looked at this item, we looked at it in the context of um, the use. It's, it, for full disclosure, when I normally look at a special exception, um, we look at it in the context not only for the use, but also with the facilities that they're going to be providing, such as the parking, landscaping, and things of that effect. For the sake of, of proceeding forward and things like that, and understanding that this property also, this use would also have to go to the Development Review Committee, we said, okay, we can see the use being here. You know, look at the location, look at it as adjacent to the, um, the um, interior recreational facility they, they have on the east side. So it's not incompatible, it's in industrial. So we can look at um, meshing out all the specifics during the DRC process. So this is where we are. So we're looking at the use, that foundation there. So first one we have is, is this listed as, as a special exception for this district? As with the other ones, yes. Within the M1 district, you need a special exception to do this yes. use. Mm -hmm. So dealing with the next part, we're dealing with, is there appropriate provisions for access facilities adequate for the estimated traffic from public streets and sidewalks so to assure public safety and to avoid traffic congestion. So this is pending. Pending because we haven't really had a plan that demonstrates that. Now we know, being familiar with the site, that they have access from the uh, one, 146, they have access from um, Northeast um, 20th Lane, 
and things to that effect. But we need to know what the landscaping would be, how they would have access for the public when they are parking to get to that use that they are proposing. So with that in mind, we said the development of the detailed pl site plan and required to the re to provide development of the detailed site plan and requirements to provide useful, usable and traffic impact calculations shall be included in the development review um, process site plan for approval. The applicant requests to approve only the use intended here. The site plan and the specifics shall be reviewed, the public safety and all that shall be reviewed at time of development review. Are there adequate parking areas and off-street truck loading, et cetera? Again, we have it pending. As stated above, the, a detailed site plan including provision for parking is not considered as part of this request for special exception approval. However, the applicant has expressed the inclusion of a second parcel, which I indicated earlier, which is immediately south of it, mm -hmm. of the main parcel, adjacent to the subject property, where public parking spaces may be provided as part of the overall f facility development. Be advised that the site area square footage and folio information for the aforementioned second parcel of land is not included within the information listed on pages of this prop of project. But that's stuff they will need to provide when it comes to um, the development review committee. Additionally, furthermore, in order to ensure the safe and efficient traffic operations within the parking area of the development, city staff has recommended the following parts for the DRC site plan approval. That all parking spaces be delineated in four inch white or yellow single stripe lines. That the traffic control signs and pavement markings be used as necessary to ensure safe vehicular traffic operation. Set signs to comply with the manual of uniform traffic control devices, Federal Highway Administration, United States Department of Transportation, 1974, as adopted by the State Department of Transportation as revised, and that wherever feasible, curb, wheel stops, or bollards be installed to protect landscape areas, pedestrian areas, and buildings, and property lines. Is there suitable landscaping for fencing alongside the um, rear of the lot in adjacent residential? Well, we don't have residential, so we don't really have to deal with dissimilar uses in this area. Mm -hmm. But even with that in mind, we're still pending the above details as said before site plan. We, we need to have a, a site plan which showing a landscape plan that is going to be provided by a registered um, landscape architect or a registered architect that needs to be reviewed and approved by the um, Development Review Committee. And I say that it's in this context. You look at the use that they have there, they're going to be developing a new site, so you need to have um, boundaries around the site. Coupled with that, you would need to have protections with the projectiles that they are using to do that, so they don't need to install certain provisions there to prevent any liability there. All that needs to be um, um, hashed out with the applicant at time of development review. Will the proposed special exception constitute an appropriate use for the area and not substantially injure that? As I said before, I would say it wouldn't. If you look at the context of the area, I believe many of all of you are familiar with the site that this use would not be a detract, detract from the area at all. It would be appropriate, especially dealing with, as I said, said earlier, with the use that you have immediately to the east that is owned by the owner himself. <laughs> so it would be a complementary use to the area. So the, yes, the outdoor recreational use is good for that area, and we, and we, we support that. And there are no um, code violations out there at this time. The applicant has been working diligently to resolve any problems with the existing site at the, um, on the east side that they may have been having with building permit and stuff mm -hmm. like that. They've been actively working with the city to resolve all of those problems and, um, and really become um, even more so um, um, uh, excellent part of right. this community in providing services for recreation and jobs to the community. So that said, we are recommending approval of the um, project, but it is a robust conditions that we have here. Um, mm -hmm. um, uh, I, I, okay. 
do I need to go through all of these? Can no. I just say as stated no. <laughs> in, the plan, in the plan that these conditions be right. met? Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Good evening. Hi. Uh, my name is Michael Pizzi, and I'm an attorney, and my law office is 6625 Miami Lakes Drive. And I'm, ho I'm here on behalf of Desert Land and Michael Deser and the Deser family. And it's just an honor and privilege to be here, and thank you for your service. I'll be brief. Um, also here is one of the owners of Desert Land, uh, Malcolm Livingston. And the operator and general person who's going to manage this beautiful facility, uh, Katari Cotton, who's well known to the city. I mean, essentially, this is the way, this is the, way the, the Deser family is trying to get back to the community. Um, you, have a, you have a developer who's taking a piece of land that under the comprehensive, under the uh, M1, in, M1 industrial and under the comprehensive master plan is owned for heavy industrial. So you have a piece of land, if you look at page three of your report, the uses that are permitted here to the Desert family, major developers, are number one, on page three, light and heavy, light and heavy industrial usages. Instead of doing light and heavy industrial use usages, instead of doing heavy industry, and instead of doing an office building, the Desert family is proposing an outdoor recreational facility. Right next to the Ninja Cafe, we have video arcades and a gym and stuff like that. So the kids can do paintball and archery and maybe kick a ball around on the soccer field. I would respectfully suggest if you have an open lot of land, you have an open lot of land that zoned heavy industrial, owned by a developer who has the resources to develop, owned by a developer who has the resources to develop it heavy industrial and come here and say, I want to build a factory, some heavy industry thing, or I want to build an office building. And he's saying, you know what? This is right next door to the Ninja Cafe where the kids are going on trampolines and they're going to gym and they're doing martial arts and they're doing ballet. And uh, the kids go to the Ninja Lounge and they're playing and having a good time. I'm going to take this lot of land that's zone industrial and I'm going I'm to leave it wide open. I'm not going to develop an industrial. I want to put an outdoor recreational facility so kids can do, so kids and the families in your community can stay in the community and they could come from school, they could come from daycare, they could come from the Ninja Cafe, from ballet and martial arts, and they could do paintball and archery and maybe kick a ball around and do wonderful recreational usages. Now, I've, now, at the DRC level, at the development review level, you know, our architect is developing a more de a detailed site plan addressing the landscaping and the parking and all of those issues. So at the, we have a Joe Dobos in Fort Lauderdale. He's, develop he's an architect and he's been retained. And at the DRC level, he'll be submitting a site plan which will be available to deal with a any, uh, on, a, uh, on a minute level, deal with some of the specifics that the staff is asking to deal with. But the only purpose tonight is to ask you to approve and lock in the use. The only reason we're here tonight, our only purpose is to say, give us permission to use this as an open field for children and families to do recreational things. And I can't imagine, and, and you know what? I'm glad your grandchild is there because the Desert family is gonna build something designed for your grandchild to go kick a soccer ball around and do and learn paintball and do archery. So now this, 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 this wonderful child and the other kids can go, can go and learn martial arts and ballet and go, to the, and go to the Ninja Cafe and have a shake and go to the video arcade and play on the trampoline. And then instead of, and when they leave the Ninja Cafe, what are they gonna see? Are they gonna see a building, an office building, an industry? No, they're gonna see an open soccer field and paintball and archery. It's, it's perfectly compatible, it's perfect. And we're simply asking you to give us permission to give you a recreational facility for families, which is, which, which is perfect. And at the DRC level, we'll have more details. I want to just mention a couple of things. Mr. Cook, the city manager, they did a phenomenal job. And the Desert family is here to say, we're here to fully thank the staff 
we are agree you had us at hello. You had we're agreeing to all staff recommendations. So Mr. Desert said, whatever Mr. Cook wants, we're agreeing to it tonight. We agree to all the staff recommendations. We're going to do what they want. You had us at hello. Uh, I would just point out a couple of things I'd like to highlight while I'm here. 